Science Research Institute at Dow, this has taken a life <laughs> of its own. I mean, it, it's just uh, something that is growing and it hell? is just so impressive. So why don't you first just for the people, I know there's a lot of Conrad Weiser people on that know about Science Research Institute, but for the Albright people and the others that have joined us, tell us what exactly SRI is. Yeah, so the Science Research Institute uh, started at Conrad Weiser. And for those of you who don't know some of the history, Rob Galtier was the principal at Weiser when all of this started. So um, he's also responsible for all of these things that are happening um, because of his support. So Rob and I have worked together for a long time. Rob, I think we might have been in the induction program together at Wiser. Um, we might have arrived right around the same time. Right around, I think you beat me by a year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so we, we've been, it's been multiple decades we, we work together. Um, but the Science Research Institute, I started as a nonprofit under the Berks County Community Foundation six years ago. And um, started at Conrad Weiser one summer with 12 students. And I think one of those students is on this call right now. Uh, and in five years, um, the program grew over 800%. And, and what we do in the Science Research Institute, which we call SRI, that's what you see on, on Rob's shirt there. Um, SRI <laughs> is, is a, a program where we, we help students, we support them um, to find their passion and interest areas focused on students in fifth to 12th grade. And then what we do is have students think about things that they'd like to study, projects they'd like to start, um, products they'd like to create, or problems they would want to solve that they're seeing out in society. Um, the students have choice for what those things are. Uh, and so once they, they find a passion and an interest area, our job on the SRI side is to find ways to support them. So we find mentors, funding, if it's equipment, consumables that they need, um, if it's people to talk to, you know, it's our job to find the things that will keep these students engaged and, um, you know, support them as, as they go through the process. So let's go back to how this actually all began. I mean, I, I remember um, you were teaching anatomy and physiology. You were in a tiny classroom and you, you somehow made it work. So when, when the kids were showing off their stuff, you, you'd weave your way through. You commandeered a, a closet next to you, basically, and, and put stuff in there. Um, but then we, we found space. We walked the building, found space. And then you kind of, uh, you know, you, you were working then suddenly with two outstanding science teacher professionals and uh, the, the, the collaboration between the three of you. And this thing really took off. Tell us about that. Right. So if I go back, um, really the, the seeds of this, I would say, started about a decade ago um, when I started commuting to Philadelphia. I I had a master's degree in secondary education from Kutztown, and I wanted to continue that that advanced science education, but I wanted a degree in in a science. Um, so I had to go to Philadelphia for that. I went to Thomas Jefferson, started working in the research labs at the Rothman Institute, and I could really start to see as I was commuting. Um, what opportunities the, the middle and high school students had in Philadelphia with going into some of these big institutions um, and research labs. And then I would come back to Berks County and see our kids who had just as much talent, but there really, there, there weren't many options for them unless, you know, over the summer they shipped off to some big city. And so that's, that's kind of where this started to take form in my mind was that, you know, we have all of this talent in what I call the spaces in between the big cities. So in Pennsylvania, you have Philadelphia, you have Pittsburgh, um, you know, and here's Berks County and Conrad Weiser sits in the middle of a bunch of farm fields. 
Well, there's, there's a lot of Comrade Wisers around Pennsylvania. And so how do we get um, real industry equipment in hands of all of that talent in the spaces in between? Because, you know, it, it turns out that the students in the cities um, are getting those opportunities on a regular basis. And so, yes, I started, started in a classroom um, and had, you know, things kind of moved all over the, the place to try to make this work and started networking with business and industry. And once they could see what the kids could do, we started getting equipment donations. Well, you know, all you need sometimes is just a little bit of success to show somebody and then it kind of snowballs <laughs> off of that. And so we get a piece of equipment, we'd have the kids work on it and do some projects on it and they would get an interest from more business and industry and it just kept growing and growing and growing um, to the point where, you know, last year, as we were looking to expand, we had to start turning away equipment because we had nowhere else to put it. So um, those, that um, situation, you know, with trying to get these kids opportunity, um, working with my colleague Pfizer. So right now, John Seifert, who is a science teacher at Conrad Weiser, took over the director position for the Science Research Institute at Conrad Weiser. And now, you know, Albright has is where I am with SRI, but Conrad Weiser still has their SRI. Um, working with my colleagues at Weiser, there were 15 of us in the summer program working together in the summer of 2019. Um, you know, just, just really shows that when you put that kind of funding and research behind students and teachers, what can happen. I'm glad you brought up 15 because we don't have 15 science teachers, obviously. We don't have, so, so this is not necessarily, although it is the Science Research Institute, this benefits all subject areas if students get involved. Right, right. So, you know, when I, I explain what SRI does, you can think of it more as an innovation process, right? It's a, it's a framework. And so we, we know in brain, um, research. The most creative time for your brain is between fifth and ninth grade, right? That's what the research shows. So if we can harness that creative power at that age and teach them what to do with it, after ninth grade, you can continue to foster that. It continues to grow, right? Um, so we have this framework of innovation. You can put any discipline or content into it. It's, it's the, the, the process of finding a problem you want to solve and all the steps you take to, to explore the possibilities for that problem. So probably the, the best way um, to explain this is to give an example. And so um, I like to tell everybody the story about the chicken manure and the glass we made from that. <laughs> and so um, if you can imagine it was about two and a half years ago now, the, the Secretary of Agriculture for the state of Pennsylvania came to Conrad Weiser to talk to the kids. And while Secretary Redding was there, he said to them, I really would like you to think about doing something with the excess chicken manure in Pennsylvania. It's the number one problem in agriculture in Pennsylvania right now. Chicken manure is sitting all over these farm fields. We don't know what to do with it. It's leaching into the water system and it's a problem. He said, but, but stay away from biofuels because that market with this is saturated to so try to figure out something more, more unique. And I had a junior um, young woman sitting in, in, in that seminar who heard another seminar the next week from one of our business partners that makes bioactive glass and bioactive glass is this um, chemical combination that creates um, these implants you can put in people. Uh, they use it for bone implants and your teeth, um, and it mimics um, your body tissues. And so she was listening to the chemicals in bioactive glass, and her brain in three days, 
she came to me and said, Ms. Shade, I think chicken manure and bioactive glass have the same chemicals in them. I said, okay, <laughs> all right, maybe they do. Um, and I said, well, so wouldn't that mean we could make the glass from the chicken manure? And, and that right there shows you, you know, when you expose these students to these things, where their minds will go, right? Our adult minds, we've been told no, that you can't do things for so long. Our minds don't even go to those places anymore. So, so I said, well, that's, that's a great idea. Let's find out if we could do it. And so we, we contacted um, the American Ceramic Society and the network. We found a glass scientist at our sinus college. We got into the research lab and it turns out the answer is yes, you can make glass from chicken manure because it is the same chemical. And now that project is still sitting at our sinus college's um, incubation lab. It's called the Bear um, Incubation Lab with four possible provisional patents on, on that material. So um, that, if you think about that, it's chemistry, it's materials, um, it was engineering. It was, um, we had a Votex student on the team that worked on this because of all the stress testing. You know, you can put all these different um, disciplines in it. We've had music students work in SRI, um, thinking about what materials do you make a stage out of um, that will, will have the best sound uh, reverb. And we've had students that are into art and think about the materials you use to paint murals outside um, so they don't degrade and break down. Um, you can really put anything into it. Yeah, it's, a, it's amazing because it's the, like you said earlier, it's the student's interest. And I think everybody here um, who, who's, who's following tonight knows when they're interested in something, you know, you'll go to the end to, to try right. to figure out. And, and not everything's a success story, but it's the process that gets there. It may, okay, this doesn't work. Right. But, you know, that whole, that whole line is in, uh, I, I, every great invention had how many failures before they got to it. Oh, right. So, yeah. yeah. And we, you say that right in science all the time. There is no failure. It's progress. You, yeah. you need to figure those, those things out. And I think the other thing that's neat is, you know, not every student gets to the level of having intellectual property kind of thing, but, but they start to um, realize what uh, resilience is and you know, they have to do some public speaking and talk to professionals and organize their thoughts if something doesn't go their way. So it's all those little things. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you talked about the people, you, the, you, you re, not necessarily recruited, but the businesses and so forth. I, I, I think, and you, you got into bioglass, so it may upset you a little, but I do want you to talk about uh, Ted Day, who uh, recently passed away, and what a what an unbelievable man to be a part of uh, Conrad Weiser and SRI. Oh, absolutely. Um, so one of our business partners, Mosai Corporation, which is out of Missouri, um, was owned by Ted Day, who Rob just just mentioned. Um, unfortunately. He passed away about two and a half months ago. It was really, you know, unexpected. Um, Ted was a huge influence on this program. Um, and looking at some of the names I see on the screen, I know some of the students from Wiser who are here um, would, would tell you the same thing. Ted, Ted was the kind of guy that would walk in a room and in 10 minutes have people sitting all around him just hanging on every word he would say. Um, and this, this guy is passionate about his, his business and the effect it could have on people. And his company is all based on this bioactive glass. Okay. Um, his father started that company uh, after he got his doctorate at Penn State. So they do have those Pennsylvania ties, even, even though they're in Missouri now. Uh, but this, this product, um, my, my class, it was an anatomy and physiology class. We were looking at some of the research papers coming out of this company. And I emailed Ted when I found his name in the, the published paper. 
and said, hey, I have some students interested in this material. Um, do you think you could send us a sample so we can work with it in, in SRI, see what this is about? And he emailed back right away because that's how Ted is and said, sure, yeah, I'll send you a sample. How much do you want? And I had no idea what to ask for because I've never worked with this this stuff before. And um, so I, well, how about, you know, it comes in beads or a powder. How about something the size of a flower bag? You know, so I said, you know, how about, how about two pounds um, about the size of a flower bag and, and see where that goes. The next email I got back said, I'm going to be able to fly into Philadelphia. I'm coming to Comrade Weiser to see what you're doing in, in SRI. Um, because it turned out I had no idea, but that two pounds to, to manufacture cost over $50,000, which means the, the real value of that when they would sell it was a lot of money. Um, turns out by the time he left, he was so impressed with these kids and what they were doing. We got the, the two pounds of multiple different types of, of bioactive glass, which we're still using now. We'll be able to use that much bioactive glass for, for the next 200 years. So it, he, th this guy, Ted, um, what an influence just from, from his support. Um, he, would, he would check in with these kids on a regular basis um, if they would need mentoring, if they would need help. Um, Comrade Weiser and the SRI program almost became his little pet project. Which is kind of amazing because he was begging for schools around him to, to hit him up for support, not just financial, right. but I mean, this is a, a genius in the science field. And, and one, it's funny how one simple email, I even remember when you told me you emailed, we were sitting at the deck at a place and uh, having yeah. lunch. Yeah. And, and, and yeah, I'm, I'm like, yeah, bio glass. You, you put this in wounds. Yeah, I don't want glass going into an open wound. So it took me about five years to actually figure out what the heck you were talking about. That's right. I remember that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so talk about uh, the growth of SRI. What, where are we going at, at this point? Especially, right. I mean, because because it's a community thing now. It's a Berks County thing. Albright's involved. It's it, this isn't just a Conrad Weiser. And you mentioned it earlier, not to interrupt that. You know, our kids really aren't any different than the the kids that were doing this stuff with Jefferson. And right. you know, that means Hamburg kids are the same as Conrad and Weiser, and Twin Valley kids, and Redding kids, and. I mean, the Berks County kids are all the same. They just need an opportunity. Right. And that's, that's um, something we could see as SRI was growing at, you know, at Conrad Weiser. If you think about you know, the mission of SRI, you know, to support students in education, find their passions, find, that, find them um, resources, you know, that doesn't stop at a school district line. Um, and then, you know, that opportunity should go away. So, you know, how, how could we take what was happening at Wiser, which was, had really outgrown the, the space and the resources and the personnel, you know, that, that we had at Wiser, how, how could we take the next step? Well, it just so happened that President um, Dr. Jackie Fetro was on my advisory council for, for SRI. And she, she was an entrepreneur at, at Wake Forest. Um, she understands this business and industry relationship with education and what we can do if we all pool our resources. Um, so she, she could see that um, moving to Albright would be a good move. It, it fits right into their strategic vision um, and community outreach. So it really, really made sense. And now, now that we have this um, expansion to Albright, now we can involve all of Berks County students. Uh, we have some new programs coming out with some, some unique twists um, and things we can do because now we are associated with the college. We also have the teacher training piece we can now add in to SRI. So we, we are establishing a partnership with the Berks County Intermediate Unit, that's the BCIU and PDE, 
so that our trainings is for SRI can go out to schools as CPE hours and graduate credits, which will work into an Albright's Master's of Education degree. So we not only have now the piece where we can support students, but because we're associated with the college, now we can take these methods that have been so successful and teach other teachers how to do this. And that's, that's where the real um, impact will come, you know, in education, which is, is our mission. And we did, you, you, it was a, a revolving door at Conrad Weiser, schools and uh, people from the state and businesses and community foundation. It was a constant, just trying to see what this is all about. And, and they would leave and, and especially the schools, they'd be so, so gung-ho. But what I want to share with everyone here is it, it was not just the students who put in all this hard work and did tremendous. I, I, I mean, you guys, the amount of hours it took, um, not just <laughs> your summers were morning to night every day, and then you'd have to start up a school year. And this is a full caseload of, of uh, teaching your classes on top of the Science Research Institute. So it really, for something as special as this, it takes the, the uh, people hours, the working hours, as well as the student hours who put in the time. It, it's just, uh, it's a lot. It, it, it is, um, I mean, for, for me, it is my absolute, passion in life is to, to make this impact on education. But there's also the piece, and Rob, I would go back to you um, and the administration at, at Wiser because it took a special place for this to be able to start or this doesn't even get off the ground. So, so it took, took a lot of different pieces. You know, if you look at Wiser's administration and what they did to make this happen. And then you have um, SRI has an advisory council with people from all over the county and, you know, Ted Day was on that council from Missouri. They're all working behind the scenes to make sure this, this can stay active and get even the funding, you know, that it needs because um, a lot of the programming that we have, um, the funding will either come from, you know, students paying to be in the program um, but what we have prided ourselves on um, in the past five years is that any student that was classified as free or reduced lunch, we would find the funds for them to participate so that your, your family's financial situation wouldn't stand in the way um, of you participating. And we've been able to do that so far because of this other group of people going for donations and helping to write grants um, and get grant money in. And, you know, so all all of these pieces, this is this is like a Berks County initiative. You know, all of these people work to make that happen. Now you, you talked about funding a little bit, so I'll kind of throw this in here. What what's that gonna look like at Albright? A student wants to to come to Albright uh, and and do the Science Research Institute. Just talk to us about that. Sure. So we have a couple of different programs going on um, with SRI. Uh, the summer program, so students, they do pay to, to participate in that five-week program. Again, unless they are by the National School Lunch Program classified as free or reduced lunch students. In the past, we've been able to go out and get grant funding or donors to cover those students if they want to participate. So groups like um, the American Ceramic Society and the Friends of the Reading Hospital, the Berks County Bar Association, uh, the Berks County Community Foundation, they've all provided grant money to give access to, to all of those students. Um, we, just this week, announced a new dual enrollment program for SRI, which is, is really exciting. Uh, and what that program will give opportunity to our Berks County juniors and seniors. So they will be able to come to Albright's campus for half a day, take any 100 or 200 level course at Albright um, with the college students. They'll be mixed in these classes with, with college students. They will be an Albright's college student at that point. 
So we'll do those classes Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then each Tuesday, Thursday, they're going to take this SRI research class uh, for college credit. And so they, we did reduce the tuition for that substantially. Um, each semester, it's $625 for that. And what that means is that if a student does this program for junior and senior year, they'll have a whole semester finished on Albright's campus as a college student for $2,500. Now, we are something like that. We started going out for um, donations for, for low-income students for, for that program. Um, and we, we have some in already, but we'll be looking at, again, other ways to get grant money in and, and those types of things, donations to cover low-income families. It's fantastic. And I, obviously, I know, uh, you know, dual enrollment, it was something you pushed for, Conrad Weiser kind of got the ball rolling on that. Um, it just helps out so much. So uh, it's nice that an opportunity at Albury College is uh, uh, coming to fruition for, for high school students as well. Um, so you say they could get a semester. So you're, you're looking at for a couple thousand, you said, correct? Right, twenty five hundred. Twenty five hundred. They'll, they'll have a and, whole semester finished. Yeah, and right. everybody, um, and I don't know what I know. Albright uh, was great and reduced their uh, tuition, knowing that there was an issue across the country, and uh, that's still probably one tenth of what someone would pay for a year at, at, at Albright. So. Um, oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, and what and, what makes that unique is that they're they'll be doing it on campus. So it's not, you know, the college class in the high school. Um, the, they'll be here just as any other college student, uh, which means, you know, we hope they, they stay at Albright then and do the three and a half years and, and finish. But you know that some students will choose to go other places. And because they're on Albright's campus taking the class, it'll transfer um, a lot easier than some of those, you know, dual enrollment in the high school program. Um, so we got a question from, from one of our, uh, uh, one of the guests, um, Chris Byrne, former All right. uh, Conrad Weiser grad, <laughs> uh, one, one of my all time favorites. And, uh, and he says 2020 was a tough and unprecedented year for our education system, but I hear hope in the voices of Mr. Gautier and Ms. Shade. So what's up next in 2021? Yeah. So, um, you know, what's interesting is it, it has been tough, but it's made us all look at things very differently. And some of those things, I think, can be longstanding changes in education. So um, I'll, I'll give you an example. One thing uh, we started this year with SRI for a partnership with Career Ready Berks and the BCIU is something called Solve It Berks. And what we're doing um, is getting speakers from any career, any discipline, any area, and they're, they're doing Zoom calls with um, Berks County uh, senior high students. So we have these calls set up. The speaker does a seminar and talks for about 15 minutes about their job or their story, whatever their story is. And then they talk about 10 minutes about problems they see. Um, and then at the end, they can do some student questions. And, what students are doing are listening to people's stories, you know, that's inspiring, and then listening to the, the problems they talk about and finding visionary solutions to those problems. So we created that to be this virtual program um, for the career and workplace standards for the Department of Ed because, you know, with COVID, you can't send your classes right now from your high school out to visit you know so and so business and so how how would we change that to be virtual but i think it's something that could stick around um so you know that's that's one thing i think for 2021 we coming is is those types of changes to education where we can we can network a little bit more um we can expand those networks and and think about the way we do things um, the other thing that, that's really exciting coming for um, Albright and SRI will be a new um, facility 
uh, at Albright. So we were looking to renovate some space um, and that will be able to put in some of some of the SRI, you know, dual enrollment programs, summer programs. Um, so that's also uh, something exciting coming on the horizon um, that you should hear more details about um, in the coming months. And I could say that's the same for Conrad Weiser. As you know, we're going through a renovation this summer. We're very excited, going to expand the uh, library media center, putting a large group instruction area in, uh, big meeting rooms, going to tie it in with video. So we're going to be able to uh, uh, continue with our, our Science Research Institute during the summer and hopefully, yeah, continue to grow that and make it a uh, you, you guys made the most of the space, but what, what it'll look like and what it is now, it's just going to be, um, it's going to be exciting. So it's going to be great working together. Tell us about how this works or how this ties in with the uh, Youth Task Force that's chaired by President Fetro. Right. So uh, Dr. Fetro chairs um, a Northeast Reading uh, Youth Task Force and what, what they're focused on are, is a kind of a strategic vision for supporting um, middle, uh, actually I should, I should say elementary through high school students in, in that immediate area. Um, so, you know, SRI's reach goes beyond um, Northeast Reading, but that specific task force really takes a look at, at Northeast Reading and the impact we can have in that, that spot. Um, We've had, you know, over the summer, then we we were able to include um, Northeast Middle School and Reading High School students. We're we're really looking at finding um, scholarships for Reading High School students to be able to participate in the school enrollment program because they're going to be able to leave their school and walk down the street um, and and you know come for half a day. So. Um, so that that the focus of that task force is development in, in Northeast Reading, and and this is a piece of that. It's also about um, economic development. So if you if you look at the possibilities of what SRI could do, um, especially you know if it starts to get its own space, about bringing kids in not just from Berks County but all over Pennsylvania, outside of Pennsylvania. Once we have our teacher training started, which should start this summer, you know, we can bring teachers in from all over the United States and train them in what we're doing. Um, so that, that will also help, you know, locally, the economy and, and some of that area. <laughs> well, th this summer, obviously COVID uh, shut down a lot of things, especially I know at, at Conrad Weiser, but it seemed like uh, you guys took took advantage of that opportunity to try to help out uh, in in some small way. Tell us about that. Right, this summer we were virtual with the program uh, for the first time, completely virtual. We had 83 kids in the program from 21 different schools. Uh, it it went really well, uh, despite you know having to to move everything remote. Um, but it, it, it was neat. We had to look at things in, in a bit of a different way. Um, the students, I think, because of, of what's happening right now and the COVID situation just really uh, wanted to connect. It seemed, you know, with, with we had professors, we had teachers from all over the county in, um, as instructors. And, and so that was good. They got to connect with, with people from, you know, 21 different schools. So um, they got to meet new people. They got to meet new teachers. Um, that was really neat. The, the other thing we did this summer, which we really wouldn't do as much in a normal year, was we, we thought we need to do something for them to de-stress, you know, just because of everything that was happening um, with COVID. So we partnered with um, Mike Miller, who is an art teacher at Why I'm Missing. Uh, he was doing the pretzel mural project with our sister city in Germany. And so we, we on the side for SRI this year, had students paint these pretzel panels for, the, for a mural. Um, they're installed now in downtown Reading, right across from the San Sander Center. Um, so that was something a little, a little different for this summer for SRI, but 
it was it was the connection I think that some of those kids needed. You touched on it earlier, and I don't want to gloss over it, but there were so many cool projects uh, through the years, at least at Conrad Weiser. Um, wh why don't you just talk about a, a few of them? I mean, there have been so many. I, I, I love the, the quote where uh, um, that uh, flies take a, a beating, fruit flies take a beating, because <laughs> I know one girl was giving them a concussion. How do you give a fruit fly a concussion? just to test right. the custard protocols, but why don't you talk about some of the things right. that went on? Yeah. That, was, that was a Kevin Murphy quote, which says, you don't want to be a fruit fly in the Conrad Weiser district. <laughs> Go somewhere else. Um, yeah, so we had concussion studies on fruit flies where um, developed a method to, to test, you know, um, when we would spin them, you know, if, if they couldn't walk up the side of the vial, that meant, you know, they had a concussion and so we had students concussing fruit flies, micro dissecting the brain out of those fruit flies and then staining it um, for the same proteins that you would find in Alzheimer's disease, these tau proteins and doing studies on that. Um, just looking at the names that are in this room right now, there's, there's um, of my students in here who uh, is now a histologist um, and what she, she did was test some of the new um, kind of, of solutions coming out um, for staining for colon cancer for companies. So she would she would get samples we could we could get um, from them, and she she would test those things. Um, the other thing she did, which is really cool, is she we we got her samples of the yeast that a local brewer was using to make their, their beer. So it's the, the yeast portion. She figured out a way to, to stain those um, with different stains and took images of those. They're now art pieces, which are up um, at Broken Chair Brewery in West Reading. Um, so, you know, there's, there's those things that happen. Um, we had a student figure out that a protein from wasp venom would uh, stick to a breast cancer cell and kill it and not a healthy cell. And that whole, those studies are still being followed up on at the University of the Sciences. Um, yeah, I mean, I could, could go on for hours um, about all these projects, but um, we, had, we had another student, a uh, really cool story. This, this student, his father, um, his father was in the service and they were giving um, the service members at that time uh, different shots and, and one of them was um, some, something to help them just in case of some kind of a, a biohazard. Um, and what this student was noticing and what the, his father was noticing is that a bunch of his father's friends that were in the service were starting to show signs of MS. His dad refused the shot and he wasn't showing those signs. This kid would go out every, every day we had off from school and visit a VA hospital and talk to the people there about this and get, um, because he couldn't take actual body fluids from people for his project, he would get nail clippings from the people that they were seeing these MS symptoms in because they started tracking them at the hospitals um, as well. And he helped the VA hospital start to get the first sample group um, for, for the side effects of, of one of those shots. So, you know, it's, it's things like that, you know, and kids get so excited about what they're doing. They'll, they'll go in to work on these things on their day off, you know, um, Saturdays, Sundays, they just get that passionate about it. Yeah, it's and those are just a couple. I mean, you have so so many uh, so many examples. And the thing that's great about SRI and that Albright um, also being a part of this, for for the most part, it was Conrad Wise. We'd have you know the occasional you know students from Wilson. We started bringing in some students from Reading. Can you imagine if we get the top, not even the top, but the most interested students in Berks County? 
and, and start working in Berks County, at some of these great places that we have, this is what we need um, in our right. community. And, and it could be all right here. So it, it's just, and, and I think that's what Ted Day saw. He saw the ability of our future scientists and how we build communities, but it really has to start at the school level uh, because a lot of these businesses, although they'll take people and train them, uh, they they all rather have them already problem solving and, and doing you know doing the research and coming up with the ideas and, and going from there, which is which is why SRI is so great. Yeah, and I I I think about 2019, the summer of 2019, the Brookings Institute out of Washington put out uh, a paper all about Pennsylvania's economy. Okay, and one of the the um, visuals that they had was a pie graph representing our intellectual property, our R&D money in Pennsylvania. And so that was supposed to be reflective of, you know, where these innovation sectors are and how Pennsylvania is doing in innovation and entrepreneurship, pretty much. And so if you, if you can imagine this pie graph, there were three huge slices of the pie that took up almost the entire pie. And then there was this little sliver of 1.5% that was left over. So the three, the three big pieces were Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, and State College. So that, that's Penn State, right? So those are the three major pieces of where our R&D and our intellectual property is sitting. And the 1.5% is the entire rest of the state. <laughs> <laughs> it's the entire rest of the state. And so what this report was saying is that Pennsylvania is going to be in trouble if we don't diversify how, how you know, our intellectual property and R&D is going. And, and that's exactly what I was seeing in Pennsylvania was these, these again, young minds and all these, these supports in one spot. But what are we doing in the spaces in between, right? And so, so SRI is that model for how you can develop this in the spaces in between, right? So we, you know, in the last four years specifically of SRI, had nine different provisional patents go in for, for students before they were leaving high school. You know, and that's, that's ridiculous, right? But, but when you support that creative process and find them the resources they need, these kids have that talent. They have that potential. Um, and, and, you know, what are we doing to feed it? Um, and that's what I want SRI to do. I want, I want Berks County to have a little bit more than that 1.5% piece of the pie. <laughs> yeah, and, that, and that's fantastic. If, if anybody uh, who, who's watching this uh, has a question and wants to send in, uh, feel free to. Um, Caitlin had sent me something earlier and I didn't read the whole thing. I just read the, uh, the Chris Byrne question. So I missed out on that. Uh, how do people get involved? Because really, um, you were beating the bushes to get, to get the equipment. I, I remember going back to the, we were the first, uh, high school in the country to have a histology lab because you were knocking on doors and, uh, why, why don't you, uh, well, first of all, tell us how uh, the alumni can get involved or really anyone in Berks County. Right. Anyone um, can get involved in telling your story. You know, students need to hear um, about what people are doing. How did you get there? What are you doing now? Um, this, this Solve at Berks program we set up we set up so that people can do that virtually right now. So you don't have to come and visit us to be able to do that. But, you know, I think for our, our Albright alumni, but also for our Conrad Weiser alumni who are on the call tonight, you know, you have um, experiences and stories that would benefit these, these kids, you know, for them to hear. Um, so I, I will always take volunteers to talk to the, the kids about, about what they're doing. Um, you know, and, and I think as soon as we can get back into a place and have the students working in our labs again, it's not really possible right now, it's limited, but come and see us in action. I think, you know, when you come to see what the kids are, are actually doing, 
you know, we can also find ways for, for people to help. You can, you can help mentor. We have students interested in so many different areas. You know, if, if we have people's names and what their expertise is, if a student has a question in that area, we can get a hold of you, you know, and, and ask for your help. Yeah, that, that, it was great how it was branching out to other people in the community. And, uh, and I also say this and pushing sort of another program, which because our, our career internship program is, is, you know, getting a part in the Savit Berks where we're starting to have students do that. Um, if you, if you're in a, you're doing something that you think an, an intern would help out, um, call your local high school. More and more high school programs are getting involved with uh, internships and, and they, they want to mentor um, high school kids and, and so forth and uh, really think about getting involved that way as well. Well, Adele, I have pretty much exhausted all of my questions. Um, <laughs> anything else you want to get out there to, to everyone there? Uh, I would just say, you know, again, thank you um, for participating tonight. Uh, I can put my my email in the chat, um, and I'm sure Caitlin Caitlin has all of my information. If you want to get a hold of of me and and help or be a Solve It Berks seminar speaker, um, like I said, there's everybody's got a story that can benefit um, a student. So we we could definitely find ways for people to participate. Could you could you just uh, touch on before I let you go what the exactly I know you did a little bit but what the SRI speaker series is about? Sure. Yeah. Um, so what we did uh, this year for these seminars is um, we'll set up a, a Zoom. We have an Albright College uh, student as a facilitator. That was also a way for us to create jobs for Albright College undergraduate students through the SRI program. So a lot of the, um, like some of the project mentoring, uh, facilitating the Zoom sessions, we hire Albright uh, students to do that, a little job creation. So um, an Albright student will get on that Zoom with you and we have a hard stop of those Zooms um, at 40 minutes. So we don't ask for a huge time commitment. It's 10 to 15 minutes about your story, what you do, what your job is, your career, your field, you know, whatever you want to talk about there. But the, the next piece, we ask you to talk about 10 minutes about some kind of problem you see in your area. You know, what are, what, what's going on? What, what kinds of things could, could students try to solve? Um, and then we leave a, a couple minutes for questions. But um, we really, we, we keep the time commitment short because of, of how busy, especially this year, everybody's um, crazy. So, you know, 40 minutes and, and we record the session that if students can't make the session, we make it available to the teachers to use that recording. Um, so far this fall, through that program, we've had over 1,600 um, views of these these seminars for teachers around the county using them. Fantastic. That is, that is really cool. Okay, well, I, I really want to thank everyone um, uh, for, for joining us, uh, for the invite <laughs> to do this. It was a lot of fun. It was great seeing you, Adele, um, and uh, really appreciate uh, everyone joining us. So uh, I, I'm finished here. Caitlin, okay. are you jumping in at this point? Any yes, qu questions from the group? Sure. Um, yes, thank you everyone for joining. And I um, <clears throat> did want to give a shout out to you, Rob. Thank you so much for joining us as a 1988 um, class alum from Albright. We're just so grateful to um, have you here this evening. Um, and Adele, as always, um, just appreciate your involvement um, and everything that you're doing for SRI. 